This is Texas Matters from Texas Public Radio. I'm David Martin Davies. This week, the Texas Supreme Court handed down a decision on the contentious issue of voting in person during a pandemic. The court, which is made up entirely of Republicans, ruled that the fear of coronavirus isn't a justification for receiving an absentee ballot. This would potentially disenfranchise many Texans if the coronavirus pandemic keeps voters at home come election day. But also the court decided that anyone with a physical condition in which voting in person creates a likelihood of injury is eligible for a mail-in absentee ballot. President Trump and other leading Republicans like Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick are seeking to block expansion of voting by mail. Trump has said voting by mail is bad for Republicans and has issued false claims about voter fraud by mail. Edward Espinosa is the executive director of Progress Texas. A lot of voters who feel they have a disability can check the disability box and uh, and they don't need to write or explain anything else. Just check the disability box and they should be able to get a ballot by mail and, can, and vote that way. Uh, what we would have liked to have seen from the Supreme Court is a ruling that just allowed for no excuse vote by mail the same way that voters age 65 and up have in this state. But unfortunately, that is a benefit that is not extended to all voters. So the disability claim is the only opportunity people can invoke. I want to read the uh, actual quote uh, from the majority opinion written by Justice Nathan Heck, uh, where he wrote that the elected officials have placed in the hands of the voter the determination of whether in-person voting will cause a likelihood of injury due to a physical condition. The officials do not have a ministerial duty reviewable by mandamus to look beyond the application to vote by mail. What does that say to you? Basically says if you feel that casting a ballot at a polling place is a detriment to your health, that you have a right to claim disability to vote by mail and no, uh, uh, no entity is able to investigate that. And, you know, it, it is a compromise to uh, to create an opening for people to vote by mail. And I think that that on, an, on its face is fair. Uh, what would have been nice if they would have just removed all doubt and just said everybody can vote by mail. Uh, in the meantime, this is what we've got. And uh, I, I expect that a lot of people can and will uh, use this this opening. So, in other words, the Supreme Court is telling voters that they cannot say uh, that fear of coronavirus is a disability, but they are saying simultaneously that uh, if you have the likelihood, if you have a condition which the likelihood of injury caused by voting uh, is, is present, then you have a right to a mail-in ballot. And that seems to be everyone. Now, yes, they, they rejected the fear argument, but I didn't read it as if you have a condition. I read it as if you think less of if you fear it and if you know it to, uh, to cause damage to you. Um, and I think that all the precautions we've taken as a society demonstrate that pretty much everyone knows that COVID can have an effect and cause damage to you. The, the media went with the reporting uh, initially that the Supreme Court ruled that fear of COVID-19 is not uh, a disability, so therefore you're not entitled to a mail-in ballot. And that seems to be, uh, that initial reading of what came from the Texas Supreme Court seems to be flawed. I mean, is that what your take on that is? I wouldn't say it's flawed. I'd say it is incomplete uh, because it is, it is accurate. Uh, fear won't get you a ballot, but there's another opportunity that can. And, uh, you know, one of the things that's confusing right now is that there are four different lawsuits taking place. And this is not the only thing that's gone to court during this crisis. You saw it with, uh, with a couple of other issues. You saw it with access to abortion as well. And 
what happens is the cases fly back and forth from one court to an appellate court to a you know to the fifth circuit and it, it's hard to keep up uh i think that's one of the reasons that you know people see these at first and they say okay well this this ruling is going to be just like the others what's different here is that this ruling is not like the others is that uh you know they rejected one argument but then they created an opening on the tail end and i'm glad to see that the, the tail end story is starting to come out there are other developments in the vote by mail story. Uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, while he is not in support of expanding vote by mail, he is saying that he's in favor of expansion of early voting in Texas, that there will be an expansion of early voting during the uh, runoff elections that we're having in July. But also, he's, he said that he's in favor of doing it also for the general election in November, but no details. What is your take on that? I mean, it's great to expand vo- or, or early vote hours, but like that doesn't solve the problem. You know, the problem is going into a place where lots of people are congregating and touching the same surfaces. I don't understand what's so difficult about allowing vote by mail to everybody. If voters age 65 and up have universal, no excuse access to vote by mail, why can't any other voter have that benefit? Imagine if we told voters age 65 and up, you can't vote early, you can't vote at a polling place. Of course we wouldn't do that. So why would we restrict a method of voting to voters age 65 and under? It doesn't make any sense, and the governor's actions don't fix a damn thing. Also this week, we heard finally from the Texas Secretary of State, Susan Hughes. Who It's her job to oversee elections in Texas. She issued um, recommendations for voters who will be voting in person, things like bring your own hand sanitizer. What does that tell you? Well, it was, it was a laundry list of conditions that people would need to do to, to feel safe at a polling place. And they weren't required. They were recommendations. It was things like bring hand sanitizer, bring your own pen or stylus. Here's one that was really interesting. Wear a mask, but a mask isn't required. But you should wear a mask. Also, voter ID is a thing. And if people can't figure out who you are with your mask on, you got to take your mask off. These, these, confusing, uh, these, these confusing rules or, or recommendations, as they were, because they're not even rules, don't make any sense. What would make sense is if just allowing people to vote by mail, but they are doing, they're jumping through so many hoops and bending over backwards to keep people from voting by mail that they're actually making it harder for people to vote at the polling place. It doesn't make any sense. Does this laundry list of recommendations, uh, these things, like bring a hand sanitizer, wear a mask, bring a pen to use as a stylus, does that just actually add more evidence to the fact that voting in person is not going to be safe and normal and that it just means that uh, voting in, in by mail should be a greater option, more available? You know, a federal judge out of San Antonio said that voters – are better off relying on letter carriers than they are going into a voting booth with other disease carriers. And I think he put that very well. That was Judge Bieri out of San Antonio. Uh, Look, if voting at a polling place is the only option people will have, I think people will show up and vote. People are angry and they're frustrated and they want their voice heard. However, if the government wants to make this as easy as possible, which I realize is very unlike Texas, but if they did want to make this as easy as possible, the simple solution is universal vote by mail. Back to the original thing we were talking about with the Texas Supreme Court and the actual reading of the majority opinion saying that voters can determine themselves, and only they can, whether in-person voting will cause the likelihood of injury due to a physical condition. That does seem like there is an opening there. It does. It certainly does. And if uh, I think that if voters are astute enough to uh, follow the news and see that portion of the uh, the news clips and uh, take that under advisement, I think they'll be all right. But as we know, there are hundreds of different news sources and voting for a lot of people is a tradition, something that they, they do on a regular basis year after year. And they're accustomed to voting a certain type of way. Now to break tradition means to break habit. And uh, 
habits are hard to break. So if uh, if people see that they can change their habits to vote by mail in this election by claiming a disability, then that's great. But there could be some people left out, and those are the people that we're fighting for. Edward Espinosa is the executive director of Progress Texas.